This program is brought to you by Emory University. Life Traces of the Georgia Coast is about the tracks, trails, burrows, nests, and other signs of life that animals and plants leave on the Georgia Barrier Islands. In that sense, then, it's kind of a detective book. You can go out and look for these traces, see how these traces then correlate with the animals that make them, or in some instances, uh, the plants that make them, and think about how these reflect behaviors of those living things in the context of their environments. The Georgia Barrier Islands, I think, are exemplary for showing how these traces can get made and how they can get preserved. There's been relatively little development of most of the islands, and those islands then can serve as excellent models for what we see in the geologic past. The book consists of chapters on plants, and with the plants, we're thinking about how their roots go down into the soil and then disturb the soil or otherwise leave their marks. With animals, we look at animals that are in the maritime forest. We also think about how the seashore, of course, one of the most popular places for most people to go and look for traces. They'll see lots of things there that they may have wondered what made them. And with my book, you'll actually know. Examples would be, say, all of the marks that ghost crabs leave. Once in a while, you might be really surprised and see where an alligator came up in the middle of the night and laid down on the beach. Shorebirds, of course, are fantastic trace makers, but as you go into the forest, you might also see some of the tracks or traces of armadillos or feral hogs or other animals that live on the islands. In many instances, you won't see any of the animals that made these traces. And for me, that's one of the fantastic aspects of this book is that you can use it as a manual for interpreting the natural world around you without having to sit for hours and wait for something to happen. One of the aspects of the book that I think is very important in terms of uh, putting all of these traces into the context of natural history is their connection to paleontology. Some of the burrows that I see on the Georgia coast, like those made by crayfish, those might be directly comparable to what I see in the geologic record made by fossil crayfish. And I've been able to make that comparison with a lot of the work that I do in my research. So this book is really for a very broad audience. It could be for people who are interested in birds, people interested in insects, people interested in paleontology, or just learning about the natural history of, of the Georgia Barrier Islands and how those barrier islands connect to a much deeper past. I think it gives you a much bigger, better insight into what's happening, kind of these unseen lives of the plants and animals in these environments when you're not there. The preceding program is copyrighted by Emory University.